Hello and namaste. My name is Guru Amora, and I am the founder and creator of Shakti Yoga. And today I'd like to take a deep dive into what that is, how it benefits you, and what a class looks like. All right, without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. Got a little presentation for you to make this clearer. And Shakti Yoga. So one cannot possibly speak of just Shakti without also speaking of Shiva. Shiva and Shakti make up one entire entity, like Brahma, like source energy, Yahweh, whomever or whatever you want to call that. The male energies and the female energies create the divine whole, much like the Shiva Shakti, Shakti representing the divine feminine and Shiva, the divine masculine. And here we have a picture with the Shakti Shiva and the snakes on either side. And this is going to play a critical role into what Shakti Yoga is. And as we dive further, we'll see that, again, like the yin-yang symbol, the yang represented by the light or the white side or the divine masculine and the yang or the yin side represented by the moon energies, by feminine energies, the darker side, but comprised of this yin yang are two opposite opposing forces that make up one entire entity. And Shiva and Shakti, as the force that we are speaking of, is used as interchangeably the word kundalini. Kundalini, or Shakti energy, represents that energy that sits at the base of our spine. And at the base of our spine, that's where it resonates, and then it moves upwards through the spine as we bring more light and life force into the body. It travels up something called the Shashumna Nadi, which is pictured here. And in the Shashumna Nadi is where all the chakra energy centers are located. So as this Shakti energy rises up through the Shashumna Nadi, it then reaches what is called our conscious state or our crown. And when it reaches our crown, that's when we experience enlightenment. And Shakti Yoga is all about enlightenment. It's something that can be used as a pathway to your destiny of enlightenment. Enlightenment as a whole means, and I'm going to put the camera back on me so that you can see now, there we go. So that you can see now these, these pictures as well as me speaking. So when we are enlightened, it means that we're having more light and life force come into the energetic channels of our body. We don't just have that one energy channel, such as the Shushmana Nadi, but we also have lots of meridians and channels that run outwards to uh, the the tips of our fingertips, to the tips of our toes, to the tops of our head. And that energy stretches out and creates more light and life force. Prana, another term can be used here for that, more prana into that human vessel that we have. And it not only permeates us on a spiritual level, but it also affects us on a mental level, on an emotional level, and then that affects our physical bodies, which is so cool. And when all of this energy is running through 
the body. It's having a direct effect on our glands and our organs, uh, where these, uh, where the light is having an effect on the secretion of these hormones that are creating a, a serotonin and dopamine dopamine releases, DMT releases in the in the pineal gland region, where your third eye is now opening because it's receiving more light and it's having the Shiva Shakti or the Kundalini rise up into the third eye and burst it open so that now that your consciousness is in a higher state of awareness, you're able to see and perceive your reality for uh, the objective reality that it is, thus making you the author or the or giving you authority over your life. Having your third eye chakra open doesn't necessarily mean that you're going to see colors of the rainbow that no one else can see or auras that no one else can see. It also means that your reality, your consciousness has expanded and your vibration has elevated to a point where you're now perceiving your reality from new perspectives and you're able to play this game of life like a game of chess. And you can be calculated in your risks and calculated in your moves so as to make sure that you're moving in the direction of the flow of the river of your life, which ultimately leads to the ocean of love where your destiny is. More on this later. So yeah, uh, the Kundalini is also represented as a snake and this snake can have uh, involuntary movements in the body as it moves up the spine uh, or the shishmana nadi and sometimes this can just look like swaying back and forth sometimes it can be an energetic shaking and that's when that energy is moving through a specific block of yours um, and then also as it's moving upward, because the conscious awareness is now in a heightened state of being or frequency vibration, it's, it's allowing you to notice the, the things that are triggering you, the, the, the blocks that are causing you from moving forward, from being too stuck in the past and not using that momentum from the energy that's being created by opening the physical vessel of the body in certain movements and postures for that light and life force to come in. If during this yoga, you hit one of those triggers as the yoga of awareness, if you stop what you're doing, you prevent that light and life force that wants to come in to help you break through those toxic cyclical patterns that are keeping you bogged down and unable to move forward in life. One of my spiritual teachers uh, had an excellent metaphor to explain this. And that is, if in life, we see on our path an obstruction. It's how we view that obstruction as to whether or not we're going to move forward, move past it. So by morphing ourselves into water, we can then go with the flow of water around the obstruction we can go under the obstruction or we can go over the obstruction. And if none of those are an option, then we blast through. We blast through the obstruction. And sometimes that looks like in this particular yoga, doing an asana or doing a specific kriya, which is a set of movements and postures 
which you'll begin to understand more as we delve deeper into what Shakti Yoga is. Sometimes it looks like repeating these kriyas or asanas over and over again until you actually start to see manifestations of change in your life. Because whatever happens in our internal world is a reflection of our outside world. And whatever we see in our outside world is a reflection of what happened first in our internal world. So this yoga is a critical component of helping us transform our lives for the positive and alchemize our being into the best version of ourselves. There are many paths to enlightenment and Shakti Yoga is one of them. All right, so going back to the Shakti Shiva energy. In this picture, we have on one side where the red is, I'm not sure how it's presenting on your screen. The red side is representative of the Shakti energy. Shakti is that creative life force energy. It is creation. And then on the opposite side, we see kind of like this galaxy looking picture, the darker version, and that's representative of Shiva. And Shiva represents oblivion, destruction, death, Shakti life, Shiva death. And in the middle is this Trishul, which if we go back to, and I don't know if you can see my mouse, hopefully you can, but if not, when I go back to the first slide where we have, oh, excuse me, where we have the, the Shakti Shiva and Shiva carrying the trishul, which is the, the, the trident. And this trishul is a representation of the I'm trying to remember the word, the Devahana. Deva Hana. The Devahana which is the representation of Brahma, which is creation, Vishnu, the god of preservation or maintenance, and then Shiva, which is the destroyer. And these three devas make up on a, on a microcosmic and a macrocosmic scale the way atoms and energy works because you have the creation and then you have the maintenance or the preserver of what is working in the center. That's the life. That's the, that's the actual substance that is created from the creative life force energy coming and making its way in. And then you have Shiva, the destroyer that comes in and kills off the things that aren't serving us or that isn't serving the life that is. Much like you have new cells that are being birthed in you at any given moment in time and you have a lot of cells that are dying in you at any moment given in time. But you also have you, the vessel, the 3D, that is the preservation of all of those forces in one, cohabitating together. And this yoga is a representation of how we can use the Vishnu, how we can channel Vishnu energy into our practice by doing this particular style of yoga it enables more light and life force prana to come in, more vitality, more life to come in. And as a result, as more life comes in, it pushes out the stuff that doesn't serve us. 
It is in giving, it is in letting go, it is in surrendering that we receive blessings from the divine, love from the divine, opportunity from the divine. And this yoga is going to set your life up in a way that is practical, that coordinates with your everyday life. And you can use specific kriyas to help you move through something in your life that feels like a block. For instance, if your throat chakra is having some, some difficulty, if it feels closed, if it feels constricted, if you feel like you can't speak your truth, if you feel like you have lots to say, but you just can't seem to get it out, there's a kriya that is specific on helping open and heal the throat chakra. And then there's another kriya that acts in support of that called the kriya of empowering your voice. And that's, that's when we recognize or recognize who we are, that we are a soul that has authority over our actions, words, thoughts, and feelings. And we can use this yoga as a tool to dictate our life, to feel the power in the soul, in the choices that we have to make in this life that can empower us or make us feel small. We have that choice. So yes, there's a Kriya for just about every practical thing that you are feeling that you need resolution to in your life, which is so cool. And I can't wait to share it with you all. All right, moving on. So as we practice more of this yoga, we experience this enlightenment. And in this enlightenment, you'll see the energy, much like a tree, gets its life from the sky, the sun, the rain, the clouds. All of that helps bring light and life force into the tree. Now let's not forget the roots, the roots that dig deep down into the earth where there are nutrients from the soil and minerals from the soil and water that it gets to collect up through its roots and into the trunk, the, 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 the stems, the leaves, to give it life. And the more it stretches outward and downward, the more life and expansion it gets to experience. And this is enlightenment. You'll be using these concepts of using our, our lower trinity of chakras. So that would mean our root chakra, our sacral chakra and our solar plexus chakra to help us feel grounded and rooted in this physical 3D life that we're living, this reality, because we are here and we've got to make the best of it. But one of the ways that we can make the best of it is by incorporating the upper trinity of chakras, which would be our throat, our ashna, and our crown to receive energies from the divine to help us intuit and give guidance for our road and steps ahead, for our journey ahead. Because the three aspects of the soul are divine intelligence, which lives in the ajna, the crown, the throat, divine love, the connector, the bridge, 
between the lower trinity of chakras and the upper trinity of chakras. And divine willpower, that would be our solar plexus downward, the lower trinity of chakras. When we are balancing all of our chakras and all of the aspects of the soul, we create harmony and union in our life. And this yoga is the harmonization, is the union. Yoga means union of those light life forces coming together to form what is you, to build into the best version of you that you could possibly conjure. This yoga will help initiate you with, it will help in the initiation process to your higher self. Don't you want that? Because if we are our highest, if we are merging with our highest self, then everything that we do and everything that we say and everything that we give of ourselves not only serves us, but it also serves others. Because when we're helping others, that's when we feel unified because we're all one, because what affects me affects you and what affects you affects me because we all rub off on each other. And when there is this concept and accepting that we are all one, there is a unification in that. And this yoga is a unification of all of those energies. It is the practice of the unification of life. So here are some benefits of Shakti Yoga, and I'm going to shift the screens so that you can see better. All right. Numero uno. Your energetic vibration rises. So you're, you're vibrating on a much higher frequency than, say, someone who is stuck in lower frequencies of drama and chaos, and you are rising above that. You're seeing that, that you're just a witness, that everything that is happening is happening outside of self. Your consciousness expands. So we talked about this a little earlier in the presentation, how that life force comes into our conscious state of being and awakens us and brings us to a higher state of awareness, of mindfulness. Number three, your connection to your higher self is free and clear of debris. And as a result, your intuition and psychic abilities are on point. Now, I don't know if you know this or not, but we are all psychic beings. We all have those abilities, but it is whether or not we are tuned in, tapped in, and attuned to these subtle energies that are communicating us, communicating with us on those subtle energetic levels. And there are specific asanas and kriyas that are dedicated to helping you become more efficient in your clairs, meaning your clairaudience, the ability to hear, claircognizance, the ability to just know that you know clairvoyance, the ability to see beyond the veil, beyond the veil of fear, beyond the veil of doubt, beyond the veil of limitation. And clairsentience, the ability to feel the empathic part of us. There is knowing in all of those clairs. There's also a clair of smell and there's also a clair of taste. But we're going to focus on the other clairs in these 
in this particular uh, yoga program because those are the ones that speak to us the most. Now, number four, your chakras are performing at their optimal state. Super cool because the more yoga we do, the more clearing out of the debris that's happening in our energetic bodies. Know that our behavior, our outward behavior affects our chakras and our chakras affect our behavior. So if we can have a direct effect on the health, on the well-being of our chakras by practicing this yoga, then we can directly affect our ability to have a life that's full of peace. And I'll make a connection to this here in just a second. Your anatomical or physical health is off the charts excellent. And that is something that is, that, that, that takes time. However, by practicing this yoga on a daily basis, you're going to notice that as more light and life force comes into you, clearing away all of that tension and blocked energy, you're going to notice that you're more flexible than you were, say, a month ago before you started this yoga. You're going to notice that Maybe your chronic stomach pain or back pain has alleviated some. These are the, I'm not, I'm not making medical claims here. I'm not a doctor, but I'm speaking from experience and that experience is my own, my own transformation. This yoga has transformed my, has transformed me on many levels. It's transformed my mind. It's transformed my state of inner peace. It's transformed my emotional state. It's transformed my physical state. And I'd like to to go into that more towards the end as to how this transformed me because it might act as an inspiration for you to delve into this particular new yoga style. Number six, you have a deep sense of knowing who and what you are. Joy effervesces out of you. Life feels easy and you feel liberated to live life to the fullest. So as I said, this yoga, having transformed my life, and I'm going to put the the screen back on me for a sec. I was first introduced to yoga with a lot of apprehension, with a lot of uh, unwillingness. I actually thought it was kind of a, (laughs) I'm I'm just going to say it because it's my, it's my truth, but Like it was a pansy or a girly thing to do. And at the time, I was really into weightlifting and um, practicing uh, just a lot of like masculine-based energetic sports. And so the thought of doing yoga, slowing down, meditating, you know, that that kind of stuff, it, it, it didn't speak to me. And it wasn't until... I had my first real mental health check-in that drew me into the benefits of what would come if I did practice yoga. And it started with going to my first restorative yoga class in Austin, Texas with a friend. And the only reason why I felt like it would be a good thing to experience was because uh, there was going to be an accompanying 
harpist that was going to be there. And I really like harp music. I find it to be really relaxing and soothing. And my friend at the time said that she was going to join me. So I said, you know, why the heck not? And I actually, um, I'm going to be very vulnerable and, and open with you, but I, I and my friend at the time got high with uh, some cannabis before we entered the classroom. And metaphysically speaking, when we indulge in substances, substances like cannabis, there's an active part of us, part of our being that wants to disassociate from the reality that we are experiencing on an everyday basis. And I felt like it was something that was going to help me through the yoga practice. Uh, but <laughs> in all actuality, it, it, it did the opposite. It made me... Well, I walked in and it made me acutely aware of all of my insecurities being in that yoga class with a bunch of novices. And I rolled out my mat and my friend and I were a little late in coming in because we chose to smoke beforehand. And... I rolled out my mat and I got my pillows and my blankets out and I just, I couldn't necessarily get comfortable. I couldn't build my nest into a comfortable state. And because I was rattling so much around and trying to figure out where goes, what goes where and so on and so forth, it was disrupting the class. The class was already in posture number one. And my friend turned to me and she said, settle down, be quiet. And that, that shook me, but I listened. And so I just relaxed or forcibly relaxed into the first posture. And I noticed right away a shooting pain in my back. So I moved and adjusted the pillow and I... I, I I did my best to, to get comfortable, but nothing I did, no position made it more comfortable. In fact, it just made it more apparent that I had back problems, something that I wasn't aware of until I was in these positions. Another thing that came to me was uh, that I was very high strung at the time. I was noticing that little things were getting on my nerves, like, like little, little subtle things. And that's not, that's not inner peace. That, that's, that's, that's having a problem with just being, with just living. Everything was bothering me. And as the class continued, I just, I came into this awareness that I do not have inner peace. I'm in pain when I, when I shouldn't be in these supportive poses. And this yoga is oddly calming me at the same time, even though it's heightening my awareness of the things that are causing obstruction into the ease, joy, knowing, and bliss that I want to feel. And the alleviation of pain. It was that yoga that allowed me to see that this was going to be my therapy moving forward. So now going back to the benefits of the yoga, when you're, let me just get back to where I was. When you're in a state of 
awareness, you're able to, again, be the author, have authority over your next move in life. And this yoga brings a deep sense of knowing, joy, liberation, and ease into your life. Because you'll notice that the more you practice it, the more it's helping you. The more you, you, you choose to just push through and you stay committed, that's very much in mirror of the of what transformation looks like. When we're positive, when we're when we're focused on transforming for the positive, which as the yoga of awareness, awareness brings the ability for us to transform to alchemize the things that weren't working for us, that weren't serving us into things that are, into a life that does serve us. And this yoga will transform your life because of how practical it is for your everyday life. When you... When you delve into this course, this Shakti Yoga course, you'll be able to pick a Kriya that is mirroring something that you're currently struggling with and use it as a tool to help you move past it. It's just, it's just cool like that. All right, so number seven. When you are committed to the path of transformation, to the path of enlightenment, you begin to notice that you are much more open to the ocean of love that surrounds you, that is there to give you love when and how appropriate. This might look like new opportunities. This might look like feeding your heart feeding the beige, the God seed that lives in the core of your heart, the creator seed. There's a Kriya dedicated just to feeding the beige so that we can feel more life force, more love in our hearts. Number eight, your ability to experience inner peace is effortless. Because you're able to know with enough practice and enough stillness as that new energy assimilates, you'll, you're going to be able to experience that peace every time you do this yoga. Or after. Number nine, you're wildly successful, successful at whatever you put your mind to. You're wildly successful because you're using the tools and the resources that the universe has now given you to help you move past the very things that you feel like you can't get past. The obstacles. In comes resolution. And number 10, with the resolution, destiny is yours for the taking. This gets you into the current, to the flow of the ocean of love where your destiny awaits you. Don't you want that? Don't you want to be the best version of yourself? Actively making decisions that serve the best for you in life knowing how to disassemble the things that aren't working for you and replacing them with things that will. This yoga will help you with that. So now I'm going to move it here. All right. So this yoga 
If you've ever done kundalini yoga before or tai chi, qigong, this shakti yoga uses the same technology in its formation of the kriya to help you along your path. So you have something to look forward to if you've ever tried these movement arts. This is very similar. And in fact, this program was inspired by my spiritual teacher, Guru Singh and Brett Larkin. Together, they created something called Kundalini University, which I highly recommend you take a look into. They are wonderful people. But the Kriyas that are taught in that specific curriculum are the, some of the Kriyas that I'll be using that have shape-shifted my life that are going to shape-shift yours. All right. So we have here a picture. It's called Fee by Annie Kyla Bennett. She's an artist here in Asheville, North Carolina. And I'm just going to switch the screens here so you can see. There we go. Look at this beautiful, stunning picture. If you know the story of the phoenix, the phoenix rising from the ashes, the ashes of its burnt nest and its burnt body, the spirit form rising up, having alchemized into its spirit form and is now in a bird's eye perspective, looking down on the life at hand. And here we have a picture of the lady outstretched her finger it looks like, almost like God's hand. God's hand meeting our hand, knowing that they are one, that we are children, pieces of God. And that we have that creator energy available to us to create the life that we want to see for ourselves. To align us with the destiny that we know deep down is ours. So yes, as the yoga of awareness, you're going to feel as you move through this yoga, certain uh, institutions, core beliefs, negative programming, toxic cyclical thoughts that just keep replaying in your head. These are the times where in this yoga, these are going to surface and you can see them for what they are. And you can say, you have power over me no more. And I'm going to show you certain techniques that are going to help you dissolve and disintegrate them for good. So that you can then bring in the new implementation of the new affirmations, the positivity and the new narrative that you're going to write for yourself. Also, this yoga is and can be performed by anyone or any body. And I say that meaning every asana can be modis modified for ease or for difficulty, depending on how we feel that day. Keyword, that day. Some days, we wake up feeling strong like Hercules. And some days, we feel like Eeyore. <laughs> I mean, let's just be real. Some days, we just we wake up and we don't feel good. And we have to modify the yoga either by, by time, the duration of which we perform the asana, or the actual uh, posture that we choose to take or the movements we choose to make to make it a bit easier for us because we only have so much energy that day. 
And there's also the opportunity for those who want and need to practice from a chair to do so. And you can do this yoga. You can do this yoga by performing the movements from the waist up. And now if that's not an option, then we can do it proprioceptively, meaning from our mind's eye. We can do this from our mind's eye, meaning that the subconscious cannot tell the difference between our imagination and our perceived reality. If we were to close our eyes and picture ourselves performing a a specific asana to its entirety, then the mind knows that it has done that. Now, let's not cheat and say, I'm just going to perform all of this yoga from the mind and not give any effort physically. Then, because uh, if you choose to do that, you're not going to feel all the benefits that we just spent a long time talking about. But if you start off the Kriya in that difficult pose, and then halfway through, you got to go to the to the pose that's a little bit more easier. And then a quarter of the way through, you're spent. You can stop right there and finish it in your mind proprioceptively. So cool. (laughs) All right. Now, this yoga, you have the ultimate authority over what you choose to do in practice. Meaning, I don't get to tell you what to do. I'm just there to make suggestions. I'm just there to be a guide. If something we're doing doesn't align with you, you can stop. You don't have to participate in it. But know that everything that is suggested is just there to help you along your journey of life. You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. (laughs) That's the beautiful thing about the gift of free will that we've been given as part of our human design here for humanity. All right, let's talk a little bit about what to expect during a normal class of Shakti Yoga. So the first part will start off as a spiritual lesson. And the spiritual lesson is generally speaking an informational lecture on a practical application of spiritual teachings that you can apply to your life very practically, very easily. And this is where the consciousness begins to expand. Because you're, you're streaming in new information from the divine that's channeled through me. Now, as a psychic medium, I receive divine guidance from my spirit team of light. And that spirit, of team, that spirit team of light looks like divine source energy, divine mother, divine father, holy angels, archangels, spiritual elders, ascended masters, spiritual helpers, guides, all of those who serve the divine plan, including my divine soul, divine self, my higher self, streaming in all of that goodness, all of that love that wants to just pour through me like an empty vessel that I am, that I take on during class to help you. Because whatever is coming up in class that you're going through is usually something that's happening on the collective level. And we move through that together and spirit gets to guide us, which is so cool. (laughs) I get so excited talking about it because it's the energy is just riveting. It's invigorating. It's energizing. And it's empowering because when you begin to accept 
the information that's coming through that's there to serve you, it begins to just resonate in you on a deeper level and give you a sense of empowerment that you can change your life. That you don't have to always feel this chronic mental dis-ease, emotional dis-ease, physical dis-ease all the time. (sighs) Then the second portion moves into the movement arts. This is when we're actually performing the yoga itself. After the yoga portion, which runs generally speaking 30 minutes to 40 minutes, we go into savasana. Savasana is when you get to lay flat on your mat and relax and assimilate all the energy that you cultivated mentally, emotionally, physically, etherically, spiritually into your body and let it settle into those new nooks and crannies of energetic channels that were already there but are now unblocked because of all the work that you just did. And so now you let that light come in and settle, gifting you with vitality. So we relax here for five minutes And that's what the dedication of the first half of the five minutes goes to. The second half of the 10 minutes in Savasana, you go on a shamanic drumming journey. This is my medicine drum. Her name is Deirdre. She is deer skin and she's a dear friend of mine. And she is there to serve you and awakening parts of you that need to be recognized, that need to be accepted. And these could be something such as core wounds or events or something in your reality that needs to make itself apparent to you so you can see it from a new perspective, a new position to offer it to the divine for healing. This is when you get to take that practical application of the lesson you learned that day and apply it to the wound, to the parts of you that need the healing and the attention the most. This can also be a time of meeting your spirit guides and team. This might come to you in sensations and in in, in in the clear sentience, clear audience, clairvoyance, clear cognizance. You get to go on a journey, period. And it's beautiful. And it's there to help you. And lastly, we come together in what's similar to Kirtan, if you've ever experienced Kirtan. But in this last half of the portion, we are coming together as a class. And this looks like singing, mantra. This looks like performing mudras with the singing and the mantra. This could look like ecstatic dance. This could look like uh, playing instruments all together, singing and celebrating the victory that has happened because of the alchemization that has occurred through the process of the Kriya Yoga. And there you have it. That is Shakti Yoga. And I look forward to meeting you in class and serving you as your guide to your higher self to help you merge with the best version of yourself. My name is Guru Mora. 
over and out. Satnam.